Hey guys, Lee Zephyr here, and as promised, this is part three on the path to publishing. Um, I'm having to keep an eye over here because I thought I hit the record button a minute ago, and I spent about 15, 20 minutes talking to you guys, and you guys ain't even there. It wasn't even there. Um, it wasn't recording. So here we go. We're trying this again. So diving right back into it. Part three on the path to publishing. When we left off, I just graduated high school. I was fresh out of high school and um, was doing the working gig. So much similar to that, the next couple of years was me spending time with friends and family. At one point, I moved in with my grandparents who lived in the next town over and lived with them for a year. At the end of that year, my what is now my wife, um, we had been friends for a little while before. But in 2014, early 2014, we ended up admitting our feelings for each other and realizing that we had developed feelings for each other and started dating. A little bit into that, we both ended up moving back in to my parents' house. Um, they had a guest room there for her to stay in. And we both moved it back. Or I moved back and she moved in to my parents' house with my parents, my stepbrother, and my brother. And we all kind of lived there together. And so much, again, not much writing going on because it was a new relationship. Again, I hadn't had that many real relationships in my life, just a couple that I even consider real ones that counted. And even then, you know, it had been a long time since I had been in a relationship with someone. So it was very much a learning process on how to be together and, and working our way through all the trials and errors of life and ups and downs. So 2015, yeah. I think early 2015, we'd been together about a year and a half, a little over a year and a half, when I proposed. And of course, as you can see here, she said yes. Um, later 2015, so in December of 2015, we ended up moving into moving out on our own and into the trailer that I'm in now, that we still live in. And 2016, we got married. So in 2016, we, um, we got married, got hitched. <laughs> and so... After the wedding, after the marriage, um, we, uh, you know, we went back to work and life and stuff. And it was during this time that I started writing again. So it had been the last time I had written, like, really legit wrote anything was in high school. And I graduated high school 2010, so it would have been, like, 07, 08, last time I would really, like, gotten into writing stuff. And here it was, 2016 would be when I first when I when I went back to that thing that I hadn't thought about in so very long. So inspired by our relationship and our marriage and our love for one another and everything that we had went through, we we went through a lot. We've went through loss, miscarriage, um, ups and downs, you know, obviously the the wedding and the honeymoon. All these things were fantastic parts and chapters in our lives. And it inspired me. I wanted to write a book. I wanted to dedicate something to her. I had done a few poems here and there, like little poetry stuff to send to her, just to be sweet and stuff for Valentine's Days and birthdays. But I wanted to write something to commemorate our relationship. And so, um, I'm going to drink here, sorry. Thank you guys, sorry about that. So, I ended up writing what would be the first draft of The Princess and the Squire. So, the idea on this and the goal on this was the original Princess and the Squire, and again, this may be something that I actually read to you guys someday, um, if you guys are interested, was to, it was going to be part based in reality and part fantasy. So the goal was, for instance, there is a scene, when, or not scene, so when we first, before we were actually together, but when we first kind of started realizing our feelings together, we would went on a church trip to this place called Renfro Valley, that's um, here in Kentucky, and it's like, a, they have a lot to do with like old school music, and they have these little museums and shops and real old timey stuff. And every Christmas, they do like a big feast, a big Christmas dinner thing at the restaurant there, and they put on a Christmas play. And they have lots and all this stuff, and the church usually took a trip to it. So we ended up 
was together on this trip. Uh, out of our like friend group, we was like two of the only people that was able to actually go. So we kind of hung out together and stuck together. Well, in between where the restaurant is and where the museums and shops and all that is, it's like a little tunnel that you walk through, a little underground underpath tunnel. So, for instance, in that, there, on that night we was walking through there, it was kind of later, so the, there was just a little light on under the tunnel, and right dead center of the tunnel, there was a yellow gummy bear. So somebody, I don't know if had left it, I don't know if an animal carried it under there, what happened, but there was just a singular yellow gummy bear laying in this tunnel. And we thought it's hilarious, I don't know why, but we got such a kick out of it, took pictures of it, I'll try to find the pictures and show them to you guys sometime, but just thought it was hilarious. So... When it came to writing the book, in the original draft, when I started it out, I started actually telling about their church trip and their Renfro Valley trip, and it was all set in reality. It was it was me and her. The only difference was, is in place of our names, I used Lady So and So and Squire So and So, and um, when I got to that part in the book, instead of a gummy bear, it was like a real life bear with like yellow gummy stuff dripping off of it. And I picked up a stick and like ran and tried to scare it away. And then after, and then like in that scene, then it would just fade back into we was on the other side of the tunnel. We went and looked at some shops and seen the Christmas play. Very realistic stuff. So like, and one part of the original draft when it came time to go, um, we had to go pick her up uh, from her parents' house, um, her parents' apartment, and instead of just riding, I wrote, we, we was going on our way to go pick her up, traffic was kind of thick, um, we was in my buddy's white car, suddenly the car turned into a white horse, and I was riding along the road and racing train tracks and all that stuff, but then it put, that we pulled up in the white car, you know, so it was that kind of weird, because like I said, everyone pictures their life as this big grand tale and this grand romance and this big picture in their head, and... So I just made, wanted to tell the real tale with exaggerated scenes. And I'd written basically what, again, in my mind was, you know, a good, a good novel. I thought I'd written the whole thing out and was done. It was good to go. I think it had like 13 chapters, probably not even 100, a little over 100 pages. Um, but sadly, a lot of it looking back over and it was fun it's a fun little read and fun little adventure and stuff and you do get to see a lot of the realistic real life kind of stuff but the problem was is it just was not gripping enough it was fun for us who knew it and lived it but in this the book especially the later part when i started describing our honeymoon trip to walt disney world i did a lot more telling than showing right so i noticed i had whole chapters where I was just saying, we rode this ride, and then we rode that ride, and then we rode this ride. And, like, that's all I was doing. And as, a, as an author, you know, show, don't tell. And I realized that, that I had a bad problem of doing that. So, again, yes, if you've ridden the rides or if you've been through the same things or the same scenarios that we went through, then that was fine. But the odds of people, you know, the numbers of people that's going to have done that, so... That was one of those lessons I learned that that was just not going to work. It needed to be seriously facelifted and, up and, and changed around, edited. And I started doing that with that original draft. was still going with the based in reality with exaggerated fantasy scenes. Then the more I thought about it, the more I sat on it, started editing that one and writing notes for each chapter. I said, you know, I think I would rather just rewrite the whole thing and turn the whole thing into a fantasy. Still have it inspired by real events. If you've read the book, you know I did keep an inspirational moment for the yellow gummy bear still in there. Um, uh, so, again, it's one of those things I decided to take that instead of having the realistic moments stretched out into, with a few scenes of fantasy, I decided to just make it all an entire fantasy novel that was still inspired and had people, places, and events inspired and based on loosely, very loosely, or exaggeratedly based on our story, so to speak, with little nods to it. And uh, so that's where the first concept originally for The Princess and the Squire, the novel that you know it as now, started to come into play.
So then what happened was I started work at a job here in town at a little data entry call center place. And I met a buddy of mine who is a fellow author who has three or four books on Amazon and Audible. So I will put a plug in here for him. Definitely go check out Sean Green. Um, it'll either be in the Sean Green or Sean M. Green. Um, he has been writing the Evo Born or Evo Born. Sean, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, the Evo Born series, uh, which includes Break, Collide, Dodge, and Evade, I think is the most recent one. So he has those. He also has some other uh, series and books that he's been working on and that he's got out. So I definitely highly recommend any of those. Um, again, he's a wonderful author and he's also a wonderful uh, cover designer. He is actually the one that did the cover for this for Princess and Squire. So he actually helped me get all that lined out, um, which is very awesome, and I am forever indebted to him for that. But he's a great author, and so when I met him and we first started talking and becoming friends, and he had told me at work, we talked a lot about life and, and similar um, tastes and stuff, and when I found out that he had published, at the time I think he published two or three books already, and um, through Amazon, through Amazon Kindle and Kindle Direct Publishing, KDP. And I'd never heard of any of this. I didn't know nothing about this. I, the only, to be fair, I didn't know much about self-publishing at all. I had always thought that the truest route for publishing was the traditional route. You've got to get picked up by somebody. Somebody has to read a draft of your book and like it enough. And again, at that time, I was working on my redraft for Princess and Squire, but it was moving pretty slow because I, I I was just so nervous. You know, I like I wasn't sure if this dream could be a reality. I wanted it to, but I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself, a lot of faith in myself to be able to see it through. So Sean started telling me about the ease with which he was able to publish through Kindle Direct Publishing and through Amazon and how how not again not only how easy it was but it basically is free you you agree to like um, I think it's a non-exclusive contract for the ebook for the first three months um, through Kindle and stuff and that, some of that may have changed and I'll do more research on that for next video but he did uh, tell me about that he told me about his story on how he published some of the, his books and stuff through there and how he had already made such and such amount of royalties back and was doing pretty good with it. And I thought, well, dang, that's pretty awesome. You know, that's pretty exciting. Knowing that, if it is that easy and if anybody could do it, maybe there's a chance. Maybe there's a chance for me to actually make this a reality, to make this dream a reality. So he was working on another of his books in the series at the time, and we began kind of pushing each other. So we made it kind of a a friendly kind of challenging ordeal and held each other true to it to where every week when we would come back into work every day or week however you say it we would ask the other one how much did you get done this week how many words did you get typed this week did you hit this number of words did you, did you hit this many chapters did you uh, what where did you leave off at okay read me read me a little bit of a paragraph of the last thing you typed and let's see how it sounds and again, likewise, if we got stuck, if like there was a paragraph or a sentence or a plot beat that we're just like, uh, I don't know if that sounds right. Can I read this to you or you read this? You know, we'd email each other and I'd send them what I, I wrote. And it was a very good push. Like I said, having a writing buddy or a author buddy or somebody to, uh, just anybody, even if it's not a, another author, I highly recommend if you are getting in like indie author game or self-publishing game or if you're just stuck and need a little bit more motivation and push, it does not hurt to have someone, even if it's just a, a spouse or a friend um, who may not even be a writer, but just have them, you know, check in on you and let you know like, hey, did you get anything new? Uh, is there anything I can listen to or you can read to me real quick? I can just... I'm just curious, you know, just anybody to hold you honest to it and kind of keep you pushed um, in a good way. And 
because that definitely motivated me. And through that time there, over the next year or so, I really got a lot of the Princess and the Squire done that um, first draft. And pretty much, I think, by the time this was early last year, around the time that COVID unfortunately hit, that I mainly finished my first rough draft. Well, as you know, with COVID hitting, a lot of us are quarantined and, and forced at home and work from home, which the one lot in the darkness sort of thing was, gave me time to put a lot of focus into really driving home and trying to finish Princess and the Squire to get it ready for publishing. So during this time, I know this video is going a little bit longer, but we're actually um, going to let this one be a little bit longer video. So it ways I can um, uh, finish finish my story about Path to Publishing because we're almost there, everybody. So during the the quarantine and a lot of last year, I spent editing and re-editing. I didn't have money again. This being my first novel, I had no money, um, especially with COVID going on. I had no money for professional editors, as you'll know if you've read the book. There's few still a few grammar mistakes and edits that need made and need fixed. Um, but during this time, I was doing a lot of self-editing. Uh, I had my wife going through it with me, and I was reading it to her. I was reading to friends of mine to try to get thoughts and opinions on it and see where they thought it was, how they thought it sounded. And so went through a lot of that ordeal, and November of last year, I felt confident and comfortable. I felt I went right through it as many times as I could. Now, obviously, as we know, still mistakes, but again, bear with me. It is my first novel. Um, and there, even then, I don't think that they're mistakes that are big enough to, to disregard the rest of the book, right? Like, they're very minor, and I think they're easy enough looked around and, and read through that and looked over that it's still a wonderful read and a wonderful novel. But... At this time, I had been reading through it until my eyes were crossed, and I love the book, but I was like, I'm, I just felt like it was time. I felt like it, I was ready, and I wanted to get it out there. I didn't have money for anything professional, there, and I had read through it and did as much editing and redrafting as I could with the funds available to me and the, the resources available to me. So... On November 25th, I think, I think it was like Thanksgiving or the day before or after Thanksgiving, maybe in the 24th, I published my first novel. I went through KDP. Well, it was a little bit, now I should say it's a little bit more time consuming than that. Let me go back. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So it was the week of Thanksgiving, and it was earlier that week, the weekend before, I had got up with Sean, and you have to get the cover for the book just right, especially to do the paperback, but at the time we was mainly focusing on the ebook version. But even the ebook version, they want your cover to be right, want your formats to be right. So we spent a lot of time working and then having to redo the cover, restretch the parameters and the uh, guidelines to get everything fit within a certain uh, queue there and scope there. And then once you submit it, it takes up to 72 hours. So you go through, when you go to KDP, you sign up with an Amazon account. You put your book title, description, tags, your odd target audiences. Um, then they have a place where you can upload your actual document file. I think a docx file or a um, .pub file, epub or whatever it is file. And then they have a place to upload your JPEG, PNG image file for the cover. And then once you get all that and all that's approved, then you click submit. And it takes 72 hours for them to review it and process it and get everything formatted just right and do all of that. So, again, it took us a little bit, but we finally got it, and it actually went live, the ebook version, around Thanksgiving. I can't remember if it was the day before, day of, or day after, but it was November 24th, 25th, 26th, somewhere in there. And there was my ebook, and I was so excited. I was so happy. I could not stop looking at it. I kept going to the page and looking at it, you know, being up and live and stuff. I did it. I had made it. I finally done it. But I still had a few hurdles to go. A few, not hurdles, but a few boxes left to check on that dream part of it. 
which came the paperback. And the paperback was a lot harder to get that cover just right because then you've got to adjust and align for the spine and the back cover. See, for the ebook, you're just people are just seeing that picture, the front. But for the paperback, you so it took us a lot more trial and error getting that lined up the right way. And getting the paperback, the pages to fall the way I wanted them to. So you, getting your page breaks, for instance, so you, your page breaks are a little bit smoother. And so, finally got all that. And I'm not sure of the exact date, but it was, was not maybe a month later. It was sometime in December or January, I believe, that we got the paperback officially off the ground and ready to go. And not gonna lie, when this this actually is this copy that I've been showing you guys is the first copy I ordered. This was my first copy of the book, my first print. And this is the one I kept because it's this this is my copy, the special copy. Um, and yeah, I cried. I cried like a baby when I got this at the mailbox. I, I drove around uh, where we live in a um, community area. We have a community post office thing, little post office box. So I went and when I got this, I sat in my car and cried. Because just being able to hold something with my name on it and that I created and being able to look through the pages and see that this was my book. My story was physical now. It was made reality. And I was so happy and excited and finally a published author. Afterwards, um, earlier this year, I believe it was. Yes, I believe it was earlier this year. This year and last year have been such a blur for me. But I believe it was early this year. Yeah, yeah, right, right. It was earlier this year. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. So February, March, April, around in there, I officially completed the audiobook, which is available on Amazon and Audible. Uh, I worked with a guy, with another guy named Sean, ironically. Another Sean this time. Um to help me do the audiobook. Great guy, he did a great job reading the book and doing the audio version and the vocalized version. We worked real closely together, worked out some of the uh, grammatical errors, we worked out uh, a lot of the timing and a lot of the um, vocal, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, vocal timbre and stuff for the characters and had a lot of fun working with him and then same process you submit it you gotta wait for it to be approved if there's anything wrong if there's like too many seconds at the end of the audio clip or too many seconds at the beginning then you have to go back and recut that and listen make sure all the other ones line up so it was a whole thing but we did that through a, a uh, process called ACX um, publishing which does the audiobook side of things again it was practically free for me now it just depends on the narrator you get for the book some of them you can make a deal so you can work out that for split of the royalties half and half on royalties or you can offer them a certain or some of them will only take a certain amount of money up front they have their own negotiations that you have to go through I was able to work through with my narrator and we decided to just split the royalties evenly for the audiobooks so uh, definitely look into that. It's a great audiobook. It's a great listen. It's about four and a half hours long, so it's not a long listen. And it's a good way to take in Princess and the Squire, which is also available paper book and ebook on Amazon. And it's also free for Kindle Unlimited readers. If you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read the entire thing free and leave me a rating or a review on Amazon, Audible, or Goodreads, any of those uh, avenues. But yeah, so that is how I became a published author. That's how I went through the steps. And from lonely little boy who loved writing elementary short stories, um, poetry, music, novels, passion projects, all the way up to a finished, completed project um, that I could hold in my hands, that I could show off to people um, and uh, tell people about and tell you guys about and start this channel and really dive into the author life, indie author life and self-published life. Um, and I'm hard at work on more projects. Now it's it's the path to publishing book two. But thank you guys so much for coming out and for watching these videos and supporting. Again, I'm going to try to start doing some more videos where I'll talk more about my past and, and origin, so to speak, and I'm going to read some of my old works um and projects to you guys and some poetry song videos and maybe do a few more like vloggy videos just try to update you guys on 
day-to-day -day life with me. And so I hope you guys will stay tuned. I hope you'll spread the word. I hope you guys will go buy a copy of the book. If you've already got your copy, if you've already read it and, and enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe here, but also go to Amazon, please, 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 and, and or Goodreads or Audible and leave me a rating or review. Spread the word. Tell your friends and family. Um, the biggest thing that will help me with making more of these books and more of these videos and interacting with you guys is by selling more. Also, I do have, if you go to my website, um, which I will post a link to down below in the description below, I do have a merch store. If you do like that cover I was talking about, Sean's cover that he's got here, I do have a merch store that has a bunch of different shirts and clothes and um, hats and uh, bottles and stuff, like uh, water bottles that you can get that has the Princess and the Squire logo on it. So rep represent through some merch. Be cool. So um, thank you guys again for everything. Please stay tuned for more, and uh, have a good day.